You were made on purpose for a purpose. I'm probably going to be saying this sentence probably only until the day I die. And the reason is it's true. We're all made on purpose. Specifically, if we're Christians, our purpose is to go and make disciples, meaning go spread the gospel. But when God revealed to me my specific purpose, which is to encourage hearts, I felt excited and overwhelmed. And today, I have a little bit longer blog cast than normal, which I'm going to, I'm titling it, um, The Steps of Stumbling Forward, because a lot of times I um, feel like I'm not making progress and that all I'm doing is stumbling. And maybe you feel that way too. So I just want to share with you some of the steps that I've had of stumbling forward of living out my purpose. And in my hand here, I have, in January 2008, Encouraged in Heart, I just started blogging. The Finkster has been such a faithful friend to me. I mean, not just my best friend, my lover, my man. I, I mean, a faithful friend to you. I mean, if it wasn't for him, I, I've joked before that I literally would be writing via stone tablets like a cave woman. And we started blogging, and if it wasn't for him setting it up and doing the technical end, it would never be for sure. And so this was the first newsletter. When God said, go encourage hearts, I went to the Proverbs 31. She speaks. Check it out if you think you might be directioning towards women's ministry, speaking, writing, blogging, reaching the younger generation. It's an awesome annual conference. I've been twice. Just amazing. I can't say enough things about it. But um, And it said, go encourage if you know, and write for the people that are in your sphere of influence. So I did that. I went home. I made this. It's about a five or six page newsletter. And I emailed it. I'm so embarrassed to say this. I emailed it to all women I knew that I felt like God wanted me to encourage. I didn't ask their consent. I just emailed it. I know, really ghetto of me. And then I started, I learned at that same She Speaks conference that I should be submitting articles to different entities and try to get published because that's what freelance writers do. I didn't know it. You know, I was never a writer before. So then in 2009, the very next year, I got my very first article published actually in Proverbs 31 Ministry Magazine. And I, the reason I want to show you, this is in my office. The very first article was on coffee and being impatient, which pretty much has been a definition of me. <laughs> So, but I wanted to show you this beautiful framed um, article. The Finkster, I didn't know he was going to do it. He surprised me with it, and it made me bawl like a baby. It was so sweet that um, it was a big deal. He saw me struggling, trying to live out my purpose and stumbling forward, and he got that for me, and I just cried. It was just the sweetest, most thoughtful gift ever. And then in 2000, that was 2009, in 2010... I had my very first speaking engagement at a clean Bible church, and I was so nervous because I knew I was a fraud, and I just was scared that the women at McLean Bible Church were going to learn that very soon after. And the funny thing is, is that the the steps of stumbling forward, sometimes convincing ourselves of the truth that God did make us for this purpose. You know, I didn't think I'd be legit until I I was published, and then I didn't think I'd be legit until. I had a speaking engagement. And then I didn't think I'd be legit until I did a women's weekend retreat because that's what real women speakers do. They ha they go to women's retreats and speak. And then, so, you know, there's always been a convincing of you're not legit. Listen, Jesus says you're legit today. And it has nothing to do with anything we could possibly do or achieve. So, um, and then in 2011, I got my very first paycheck. So, you know, I, I said to myself, I'd be legit if I was a paid speaker. You know, a lot of the groups that I went around to is a love offering or a cup of coffee. A lot of times I got a Starbucks gift card, which, hello, that is great currency right there. But in 2011, I got my very first paycheck from my beautiful friends at Christian Fellowship Church. And I know it sounds so wimpy, but I don't want to show you because I don't want to see a mount. But on the back of that same framed art, I have taped my very first paycheck from Kristen Fellowship Church, and um, there's a whole beautiful story about it, but there's no way I could say it without crying. So I'm going to keep going, but I just love you people at CFC, Liz, and wow, I wasn't expecting to be paid, and yeah, so it's just precious. And then, you know, just show up, and you'll be blessed, and I don't mean just by a check. 
just show up and be faithful wherever your purpose is. And that's where God's honored. Okay, I'm going to get my act together now. And then in December 2011, Encouraged and Heart became a limited liability corporation. I feel like it should be like a major liability corporation or something like that. But so we are official December 4th, 2011. We have a tax ID number. I'm not a nonprofit. I'm a, a limited liability corporation. So that was pretty awesome and another step of stumbling forward and I'm grateful not only for Fingster's friendship and technological skills, um, I'm thankful for his business savviness and helping guide us through this. I mean, just such, I'm blessed to have great people in my life. I mean, really blessed. And then I convinced myself I was still a fraud because um, real Christian, like I said earlier, real Christian women speakers do weekend retreats. And then um, I did my very first weekend retreat new life christian church and i have this i know you're gonna think i'm such a sap but i have this taped to the back of that same first article new life ladies i love you so much so so much and i it was an awesome experience for me i don't know if they were encouraged but i know it was an awesome experience for me but you know as awesome as that was in that next step of stumbling forward the enemy still came against me during that weekend saying you're a fraud because real speakers have books and you'd be a real speaker then. You know, first it was, you'll be, you need to be published and then you need to be paid. You need to get a speaking engagement and then you need to be paid and then you need to be a weekend retreat. Then you need to have, you know, nothing. You see, that's not what God says. That's what the enemy says. Not good enough, not good enough. You're not worthy enough. You're not legit. Listen, MC Hammer said it right on. We're too legit to quit and it's nothing that we have done that's awesome. It's because of what God's done for us. And then in 2013, I told the devil to just shut up <laughs> and we published our very first book. And this is an ebook, so I can't show you the book, but I have postcards made that um, we published our first ebook, a little, little book. I, my, my long range goal is to do a paper book and that was to help fund a paper book. And then in 2014, here is just the really rough draft of hopefully, I prayerfully, our very first um, paper book called Building Bridges. So I, I wanted to give you three things to, to just think about as I just shared just some of the many steps. I mean, from 2008 till today, doing the higher math, we are at four or five, six years. So you see, I thought I should be a lot further than now. And I compared myself to New York Times bestselling authors, people that are speaking on international venues and continually saying not good enough. You know, it is good enough what I'm doing because I'm doing something and doing something's better than nothing. And a lot of times we just need to stumble forward, trusting God each step of the way. But I want to leave you with three things because I, you know, I like to, you know how I roll. I like to roll practically in identifying your purpose and the steps and stumbling forward. And three things I'm going to leave you with. I wrote them down, so I'm going to double check. Just take the next excellent step. And I didn't say take the next perfect step. I said take the next excellent step. You know, maybe it's just showing up at a writer's conference. That's all I did. Or spamming your friend's newsletter you wrote. <laughs> that could be your next excellent step. Or having the courage to do a blog cast. I can't even tell you how ridiculous I felt and inadequate still to do broadcasts. Just take the next excellent step. The courage to write a paper book is the next excellent step for me. The next step I want to tell you is study the people that have similar giftings with you. You know, women, for me, women who are Christian speakers, and not just, I study not just Christian speakers, successful women speakers and writers. I study their Instagrams. I study their Facebooks. I study their um, websites to see what I can glean and what would work for me. And that doesn't necessarily mean what would work, you know, everyone that has different capacity and what would work for. But take the next excellent step. Study the people that have similar giftings. And then the third and perhaps most important step is don't quit. You know, when... I was in a very vulnerable point. It was about that time when Jake um, had encouraged me. I had a very tearful afternoon, and and he said, Mommy, what's the matter? And I said, you know, honey, I feel frustrated. I don't know if this is 
really working out because I, I, I'm not making progress to myself. All I'm doing is stumbling forward. And Jacob said to me, so confused, and I just remember this moment, it's so tender to my heart, and he said, so confused, Mommy, what are you talking about? Look at that. And he pointed to the beautiful framed, my very first published article that the Finkster had framed, and he pointed to that framed art, and he goes, Mommy, look, as if that was the whole enchilada right there, like there's no possible way you could think that way. Look at the wall. And you know, all throughout the Bible, there's, there's things that tell us to remember. You know, Jesus at the Last Supper, he said, do this in remembrance of me. Throughout the Old Testament, you know, we, we put a stone in the ground to remember God is able or God is faithful. You know, sometimes we have to remember. And that's why, you know, I'm a little sap and I have my, after the Finkster gave me the beautiful gift, I tape my first paycheck. I tape my first woman's retreat because you know what? I know Part of my strength is encouragement and part of my weakness is not, is being discouraged. And I need to look at that sometimes and say, that saying that Joyce Meyer says is, you know what, I'm not where I used to be. I'm not, I'm not where I need to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. And today I just want to encourage you, no matter what it looks like, remember you were made on purpose for a purpose and just take the next step and just go ahead and stumble forward. And it may not look pretty. I, just my life is a perfect testament of that, of it doesn't look pretty. But going and stumbling forward, God will be glorified and you'll step by step be revealed your purpose and it'll be more refined and it will look different each year. But just take the next step stumbling forward.